The Shrek movies are incredible. With all honesty, I rewatched the Shrek films not too long ago, and there were some unusual things that I noticed with Fiona, especially in the first movie. I did a bit more study and research, and things quickly began to unravel. I found out way more than I suspected I would, and everything slowly came together. A recent Shrek theory that's been going around actually suggests that our very own Princess Fiona that we've grown to know and love is actually a cannibal, and despite this being a a dark and disturbing thought, it's surprisingly plausible. Upon the film's release in 2001, Shrek quickly became one of the most significant movies of all time. The Oscar-winning feature's impact on animation and pop culture is staggering, and more than two decades later, Shrek retains its iconic relevance, thanks in no small part to its sweet story that effectively acts as the reverse of the more traditional fairy tale narrative. The story of Shrek begins by perpetuating the same old damsel and distress trope featured in countless fairy tales mostly found in 90s Disney movies. However, in an act of subversive storytelling, Princess Fiona, played by Cameron Diaz, is revealed to be the victim of a horrific curse, becoming an ogre by night. When Shrek finally kisses her at the end of the movie, she actually reverts to her original ogre form, an obvious way of challenging expectations of beauty and what constitutes a happy ending for us all. It's a neat touch that you wouldn't expect from an animated movie, especially one coming right out after the Disney Renaissance era. However, it's the more traditional fairy tale part of the story that hides one of Shrek's most interesting details to capture. It appears that whilst she was locked away in the tower, Fiona may have picked up some particularly bad habits, one dark Shrek theory of which suggests that during her endless time locked in the tower, guarded by the hidden dragon, Princess Fiona might have actually resorted to cannibalism to get by. It suggested that eating the flesh of the knights who came to rescue her was how Princess Fiona was able to survive during her captivity, particularly as it seems to be Dragon who was tasked with her care. The movie offers some slight visual cues to back up this dark entry to the catalogue of Shrek fan theories, making it surprisingly convincing upon further examination. Now, to establish how Princess Fiona became a cannibal in the first first place, one must simply examine why she became a cannibal in the first place. According to Shrek's own expository scene in which Lord Farquaad selects Princess Fiona to become his bride, we hear that she has been locked away in the tower for many years. In fact, the movie points out that she has been in the tower for roughly 20 years prior to Shrek's arrival, which is an awfully long time to live in isolation without picking up a few strange habits. We of all should know that at this stage. Thank you, COVID. The idea that Princess Fiona's tower was stocked with enough supplies to last an entire lifetime is decidedly and as it already is, extremely unlikely. This can be well backed up with how at the beginning of Shrek 4, Queen Lillian states or even argues that Fiona had been in that tower for far too long, basically proving that even her parents who live ridiculously far, far away are aware that she must be heavily struggling with starvation and maybe even other things. However, with the only entrance to the tower being a rickety old bridge over an expanse of fiery brimstone and lava, it also seems very very, very unlikely that supplies were brought to her during her time there. This paves the way for one of Shrek's dark twists because it seems that the most likely means of survival for Princess Fiona's continued stay in the tower would be for her to have been forced to resort to cannibalizing the remains of the knights who failed to rescue her. People have a tendency to do crazy and inhumane things under starvation, and being that there probably isn't any fridges or supermarkets in the castle, it seems like she might have had no choice. Dragon kills any knights that dare to enter the tower, and Princess Fiona takes the table scraps that Dragon left. Plausible enough, but as always in the theory game, enough just isn't enough. I need more. According to the theory, the fact that Princess Fiona has been cursed to become an ogre at night is particularly significant to this theory. As mentioned beforehand, being a human princess that had been trapped in a tower, resorting to cannibalism may have been her only means of survival. However, shifting into ogre form each night would make this even more plausible as ogres are shown to have different appetites than humans. And on top of that, Princess Fiona adapts incredibly quickly to this after meeting Shrek. The implication of Princess Fiona's ogre curse is that it makes it far easier to commit certain acts that would be difficult for a human, namely eating the bodies of fallen knights. Princess Fiona even tells Shrek and Donkey across the course of the film that she's 
ugly, something which she clearly doesn't intend as an insult to her ogre savior. It's possible that Fiona sees herself as ugly not just as a result of her cursed ogre form, but because of the things that she has done to ensure her survival. This not only adds an extremely dark depth to her character, but actually makes much more sense than the apparently superficial nature of her ugly comment. Also, of course, there's the fear of Godmother certainly at play here. You know how she plays a pretty critical role in the grand unifying DreamWorks theory, and you might also know how sacrifices play a pretty big role in the theory itself. The fairy godmother has been proven on multiple occasions to have been the undergoing culprit behind Fiona's curse. Maybe sacrificial food is even in the mix in this case, with Fiona's imprisonment for a reason. In addition to this specific theory being the most logical and plausible explanation for Princess Fiona's survival in the tower, there are also small visual clues here and there that appear to prove her cannibalism in the first film. The first of these comes when Shrek and Donkey first approach the tower and they spot the skeleton of a horse. As this is fully intact in some distance from the tower itself, it implies that the horse wasn't eaten by Princess Fiona or even Dragon. However, upon entering the castle, the partial skeletal remains of a knight can be seen, implying that he was dismembered and potentially eaten. In fact, we see many different knight remains and skeletons all around the place, proving my point even further. Additionally, after the rescue of Princess Fiona, Dragon's cookbook can be seen in the background of a scene during the acclaimed escape sequence. It's open on a page titled Nightly Treats and is standing beside a huge cauldron big enough for a human body. The clear implication is that Dragon has been cooking humans all this time, but as dragons aren't really known as such for their preference for cooked meat, it would seem that this method of preparation was more for Princess Fiona's benefit further proving the cannibalism theory. It just makes perfect sense all around. And finally, one of the biggest and best aspects of the Shrek movies in general is the way that they subvert the traditional Beauty and the Beast trope by having Princess Fiona's true self be revealed at the end of the first movie being that of an ogre's. However, within the context of the first movie, this revelation actually makes very little sense at first glance, as Shrek 2 reveals that both of Princess Fiona's parents are indeed human, making her originally a full-blooded human as well. This means that her ogre side was purely the result of the curse done by the fairy godmother, and that her true self should by all rights have been human upon being kissed by Shrek. Whilst the vague implication is that this changes caused by the pair's love, there is actually a better explanation that stems from the cannibalism theory. In the movie, Princess Fiona's rescue is preceded by two full decades of harsh, horrific solitude, during which she likely resorted to cannibalism, as been proven multiple times in this video. If she did indeed rely on her ogre form to rationalize cannibalizing the remains of the knight that had tried and failed to rescue her, it would follow that this became the norm for her, with considering herself more ogre than human. This also fits with her comment about being ugly, as decades of eating human flesh would have taken a toll on her emotional state and her own self-image. This would then explain why, upon being kissed by Shrek and have love restore her true form, she becomes an ogre. For years prior to the events of Shrek, Princess Fiona was a cannibal, and therefore she saw herself as more monster or ogre than human. So here's the sitch. As a young girl, Princess Fiona of Far Far Away was cursed by the fairy godmother for reasons that are not irrelevant to this video. Her parents were advised to lock her away in an isolated tower guarded by a deadly fire-breathing dragon. As the years go by, she quickly runs out of food and as every knight that arrives fails to rescue her, another body is left. Eventually, Fiona's starvation gets so serious that she resorts to eating the remains of the dead knights, placing a significant amount of shame upon her over the years. And that's about it. To be honest, I really just needed a bit of a video to put out before my big Madagascar Island theory, and I rewatched the Shrek films over the past few weeks and found this out. So yeah, this theory was surprisingly a lot more convincing than I would have originally figured, but whatever, I guess that's just the name of the game. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, it's completely free and it would help me out a lot. Laters.